This is the best I could do right now. I came back on my phone. I hope we are back on the air. I hope we're doing what we can to make sure this broadcast goes off without a hitch. I'm sorry about that last broadcast. It went bad. It went very bad, and I'm sorry about that. I don't know why. I've done my best to be here with you to make sure this broadcast goes off without a hitch. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, I'm very sorry about what's happened, but we're back here on the air right now. Folks, we want to be here. We want to be here for everybody. Okay, hold on a second. I'm trying to fix, fix this thing so it'll stay here and let us do our job here. Sorry about the bouncing eyes. I'll figure this out. Oh, man. I'm, I did not expect this to happen tonight. I just didn't. Um, let me just briefly tell you what I was going to show you. Okay. I was trying to show you a line of thousands of people in New York City because they were protesting against Biden and the state of New York for not allowing them, them to be paid $15,000 a piece as Joe Biden said they were supposed to be paid. So thousands of people lined up outside New York City Hall demanding for that $15,000 credit card to be paid to them. They were also demanding that New York City put them back in these posh hotels um, that they were thrown out of. The illegal aliens here in New York City and around the the entire United States have been tossed out of all these lavish luxury hotels that they were in. New York City and other communities such as they have been cannot afford to pay these illegals what Joe Biden promised them. They can't afford it. Nobody can. Joe Biden should not have opened his stinking damn mouth and told these illegals to come into the United States. They should not have been allowed. Not now, not ever. These illegals have been brought into the United States in, in hopes that they would vote for the Democratic Party from now and forever to make sure the Democrat Communist Party remains in power forever. And Obama, Obama is behind it. Former President Barack Obama is behind all of this. I believe that Biden is a puppet. Okay? That's what I believe is going on. Now, it's going to continue. I promise you it's going to continue. And it's not just that. Yesterday, you may have noticed on April 15th, which is tax day, April 15th is tax day, that illegals in San Francisco, illegals in New York on the Brooklyn Bridge, illegals blocking the airport in Chicago, hoping to get Biden's attention to pay them what they want to be paid, to pay them what they were promised by Joseph Biden. They're not being paid. They're not being paid at all. Okay? It's sad. It's very sad indeed that this president has promised these people all the money in the world. I'm on Social Security and Medicare. I'm retired. I don't even get $2,000 a month, and yes, I would love to have $15,000 a month like Biden promised these illegal, illegal people. If I was president, and I'm hoping Trump does the same thing once he's put in as president, 
that he deports every one of these damn illegals back to the countries they came from. That's what I'm hoping. We have illegals in Florida and throughout the United States that are killing people. They're killing people. For instance, that illegal that killed that woman who is studying to be a nurse in Georgia. All she was out doing is jogging around her neighborhood when this illegal that had committed assault and battery and sexual battery numerous times or two times before that tried to rape and kill her in Georgia. And she, she was dead. Biden and his presidency kept that illegal from going to jail. He should have gone to jail. He should have been deported back to Venezuela where he came from. And yet, he raped and killed another person. And that woman would still be alive if Joseph Biden had not brought all these illegals into the U.S. Other people have also been raped and killed because Joe Biden brought them in here. It's got to stop, and it's got to stop right now. We had the Brooklyn Bridge blocked by illegals yesterday. Those people were arrested. We had illegals protesting from Palestine over in Chicago near the airport, and people were delayed getting to their flights because of these illegals blocking the roadway, blocking the highway near the Chicago O'Hare Airport. Yesterday, five hours, the San Francisco Bay Bridge was blocked. San Francisco police and California Highway Patrol CHP made 30 arrests in on the San Francisco Bay Bridge. This should never have been allowed to happen. Something has to be done. The Senate and the United States Congress is trying to pass a law right now to make it a federal offense to block a roadway, a highway, or anything else. It should not be allowed to happen. And anybody that does it should be going to prison and or being deported out. This should never be allowed to happen. Not ever, not now, ever. Okay? I'm freaking tired of it. I'm sure everybody around the United States is tired of it. We're dead tired of it. Now, if I ever, if I ever get blocked by any of these protesters, I personally will address it myself. I will not let anybody get away with this ever again. Not now, not ever. Yes, I am a retired police officer. No, I do not have police authority any longer. However, I'm not going to allow it to happen. Somebody has to stand up and say no more, period. Somebody has to say no more, period. Now, if former police officers are out there, any of you former police officers that are out there, we all must take a stand. We all took an oath to make sure that we enforce the law. I do not believe that that oath has expired. I took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I took an oath to protect everybody. And that oath still stands as far as I am concerned. I won't let it happen again. If it happens in front of me, there will be hell to pay. Promise. There will be hell to pay. I'm tired of it. And yes, 
there are people here on YouTube, there are people also all over the world that may see this. And yeah, they may report me saying, I'm threatening someone. I'm not. I am promising to help protect the United States and help protect my fellow citizens. If I find anyone, especially these illegal aliens attacking our citizens, all hell is going to break loose because I will stop it. I will stop it. Tammy Steffi says should be the oath of every YS citizen. I agree. We should not let this happen. Not again, ever. Tammy Steffi says U.S. citizen. Yes, absolutely. Kay Morava says, yes, Ron, you would be arrested, not the commies. Yeah. But I would make sure that I would make my case in court. My oath didn't expire expire and no other law enforcement officer or our military people, their oaths didn't expire either. We need to stand up for what we believe in. Okay. Shannon Rivas says the courts are fixed. I agree. We've got liberal judges on the bench. We have dirtbag liberal justices on the bench, and they have to be taken down. They have to be removed from the benches, including Judge Mershon in New York. He's one of the worst liberal judges that I've ever seen. And yes, I am monitoring Trump's trial in New York. He's not going to get a fair trial. Judge Mershon is going to ask every member of that jury that they try to bring to judge um, President Trump. He's going to ask them if they can be honest in their dealings. He's going to be asking if they can truly judge this trial for what it is, for what they say it is. Incredible. Now, I don't believe President Trump will ever get a fair trial in New York. Not now, not ever. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. I haven't seen it now, and I don't expect to see it ever. Sad. Mary Luck says, we the people. We the people. Folks, it's got to stop. It has to stop now. We the people need to stand up for our rights. If we stand up, if we want to stand up, they won't be able to stop us. If every citizen in this country stands up, guess what? We won't be stopped. They cannot possibly try us. They cannot possibly bring all of us up on charges. If everybody stands up for what they believe in, guess what? This kind of crap will stop. And it will stop right now. It'll be, it'll end. I don't believe that there are people that will stand up. Unfortunately, I don't believe that there are people that will stand up for what's right. Because everybody's afraid. Everybody's just afraid to stand up for what's right. Unfortunately. It's sad. Now, I want to talk about some earthquakes that have happened. 
unfortunately, I don't have my my ability to go and show you all these earthquakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what has happened. I am hoping that you'll follow me. By following me, that you're listening to me for what I'm saying. Today, and I'm going to start up north on the northwestern side of the Pacific. Today, earlier today, we had a 5.0 large earthquake off the north central coast of Kamchatka Peninsula. The central coast of Kamchatka Peninsula, it was on the Aleutian Island Fault Zone. A large earthquake. That large earthquake is going to go straight east through the Aleutian Island Fault Zone. Yes, there may be some large or moderate earthquakes that are going to occur in the Aleutian Island Fault Zone. But eventually, that large seismic energy is going to travel from, from Kamchatka Peninsula. It's going to travel through the Aleutian Island Fault Zone over to mainland Alaska. And I've talked about this before. Because we've had 6.0, 6.5 magnitude earthquakes hitting over there in the same place where this large earthquake happened, just west, just east of the Kamchatka Peninsula. We have a lot of earthquake seismic energy, and that's a double word there, because earthquake and seismic energy basically means the same thing. But we've had a lot of seismic energy, large seismic energy, strong seismic energy, and it's traveled over to Alaska. It's either over in locked up near Anchorage, Alaska, or it's locked up in the upper Gulf of Alaska. That energy is locked up. There is going to be a large earthquake in Alaska. There are a lot of earthquakes, and I'm talking about a lot. There are minor earthquakes, and there are also um, some, what shall I say, small earthquakes for the main for the main, most part, locked up in Alaska. There's over 60 earthquakes in Alaska today. But most of those are either minor 2.0 or even minor tremors as well. 2.0, 3.0 earthquakes in Alaska. Some of those 2.0 minor earthquakes and 3.0 small earthquakes are over in Denali National Park. In Denali National Park. That energy is going to pop at some point in time. Denali National Park is the edge of the Pacific Plate. It's going to pop. On the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean, we have seismic energy coming down the eastern North American continent. Okay? British Columbia, or I should say, start with um, northwestern Alaska, or northeastern Alaska. I'm sorry, northwestern Alaska. Northwestern Alaska. We have volcanoes there. We have volcanoes there. And folks, guess what? Yakutak, Alaska. Yakutak, Alaska, 2.0 earthquake. There's several of them there. We have volcanoes there. And there's going to come a time that those volcanoes are also going to erupt because that energy is locked up there. And it's going to pop. We have earthquakes over in south central Alaska where Mount Redoubt is. 2.0, 2.5 earthquakes just south of Mount Redoubt, south and east of Mount Redoubt. Unreal. Today, over in the eastern Aleutian Island area, this is just ba basically south of um, Unalaska, 
south of Boone, Alaska, there's a 4.1 earthquake. This is south of Boone, Alaska. Does anybody realize what else is in Boone, Alaska? This is on the Aleutian Island Fault. This is nowhere near semi sopocono volcano. Boone, Alaska is where a volcano is. Yes, that volcano is has in the past couple years erupted. It's not erupting now. But this is over in the southern Aleutian Island chain. Okay? We've had earthquakes there. It's going to continue. This is just a 4.1 earthquake. We've also had another 2.9, 3.0 just east of there, south of Sandpoint, Alaska. Does anybody really f realize what's going on in that Sandpoint, Alaska area? Two years ago, we had a 7.8 earthquake there. About six months later, we had an 8.7 there. First, a 7.8 major earthquake. Then another 8.7 major earthquake happened. It's going to happen again. Because all that energy that's been coming from way down in Indonesia and the South Pacific has made its way over to Kamchatka Peninsula, has come around the Aleutian Islands and worked its way back into Alaska. Like I said, there is a lot of seismic energy locked up in the Gulf of Alaska and around Anchorage, Alaska itself. Four years ago, we saw a 7.0 earthquake. Actually, five years ago, we saw a 7.0 earthquake strike Anchorage. There was major damage there. The 7.0 earthquake is a major earthquake. There was major damage in Anchorage. We covered that in that incident, that event. Okay, it's going to happen again. Now, I want to talk about some other events that have happened. Over in Japan, northern Japan, off the coast of Honshu, Japan, we had another 4.6 earthquake there today. Just off the coast of Honshu, Japan, a moderate 4.6 earthquake. Further south, this earthquake was over in the Bonin Islands, southeast of, La southeast of Japan. This was a moderate 4.8 earthquake. Okay, a moderate 4.8. It wasn't just a 4.0 on the low end. This is over on the higher end of the moderate scale. If this had hit land, there would have been some kind of damage. But this was out in the ocean where the ocean waters absorbed the shockwaves of this quake. Okay. Let's go further south just off the coast of Guam today. Just off the coast of Guam. There was a 5.0 earthquake there. Actually, it was a 5.5 earthquake. Fortunately enough, okay, this is 48 miles east of Guam. Guam may have felt some part of that earthquake. The island of Guam is a United States territory, and there's a major U.S. naval base there in Guam they may have felt some part of that 5.5 earthquake. It was close enough. I don't think they felt the fury of a 5.5 earthquake, but they felt some of it. The ocean waters over there in the South Pacific absorbed some part of that earthquake, but probably not all of it. Another earthquake that happened off the coast of Taiwan Four earthquakes happened there today. Four, 4.0 to 4.6 earthquakes happened over there off the coast of Taiwan. It's happening. Why? Why are we getting earthquakes off the coast of Taiwan? Because, folks, we had an 8.4 earthquake happen over in Taiwan 
just a month ago. We're still seeing earthquakes happen, aftershocks. Earthquake aftershocks happening over in Taiwan today as a result of that 8.4 earthquake. And these aftershocks are going to continue for years. Years. Then we had another earthquake that was potentially very dangerous. A 5.0 earthquake happened off the northeast coast of Mindanao, Philippines, where another 8.4 earthquake happened there. Actually, it was not even 8.4. It was a 9.0 earthquake that happened there three months ago. A major 9.0 earthquake happened off the co northeast coast of Mindanao, Philippines. And we're still seeing aftershocks today. Five earthquakes happened over off the northeast coast of Mindanao, Philippines. The 5.0 earthquake was the, was the largest of them. The others were, three of them were minor, or excuse me, not minor, Three of them were moderate 4.3, 4.5, and 4.7 earthquakes. The other was a 3.5 earthquake. All of them happened offshore, except for the large 5.0. I believe that was close enough to shore to be felt on shore. The other earthquakes were not felt because the ocean waters absorbed the shockwaves of those quakes. Now, I also want to go over the Endaman Islands that just had an earthquake just a few minutes ago. This was a 5.2 large earthquake. A 5.2 large earthquake. This happened 25 miles southeast of Blair, India. 25 miles southeast of Blair, India. It's an island over there in the Andaman Islands. Most of those islands in the Andaman Islands are not occupied islands. The only people that can get there are people that go by sailboat or some kind of other motorized vessel that go there and visit and leave. I don't believe there's any permanent habitation over there on Blair Island or in the other islands in the Endaman Island area. That energy today in the Endaman Islands came out of India, Indonesia and the South Pacific. As I have stated before, Indonesia, Australia, the Solomon Islands, the Loyalty Islands, Vanuatu, Tonga, Samoa, down into the Kermadec Islands and even um, over there in New Zealand. That entire area, folks, is one of the largest subduction zone areas in the world. What does it mean to be subducting? What do I mean when I say it's a lo the largest subduction zone in the world? There are seven different plates, seven different tectonic plates over there in Indonesia, going south over to Australia, going east over into the Solomon, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, south to the Loyalty Islands, New Caledonia area, over to Tonga, Samoa, and south into New Zealand. Seven different tectonic plates. Each plate is subducting one under the other just like this. That is why that whole area of the South Pacific continues to get hammered. That's why we have those earthquakes over there in the South Pacific. That area is getting hammered and it's going to continue to get hammered. It's going to happen. It's going to continue to get hammered. I've been watching it for years now. I've been reporting on it. It's going to happen. It's going to continue to happen. Now, folks, it's sad. We can't stop it. 
we can't stop it. Seismic energy is going to happen. The Earth is changing. Every one of the tectonic plates around the world is moving. That's why we have the earthquakes happening. The earthquakes in the South Pacific, folks, happen because the South Pacific, just south and east of Tongan, Samoa, is where the earthquakes originate. The earthquakes originate down deep in the South Pacific. Every earthquake around the globe originates from down in the Southeast Pacific. It happens. It's going to continue to happen. Now, Indonesia got hit today. A 4.9, 5.0 earthquake happened near Mabara, Timor, Indonesia today. Another large earthquake. Okay? Again, subduction. Each tectonic plate over there is going down deep underneath the other. Just like that. That's why they're there. Okay? Let's go further east, over into Vanuatu today. We had another large 5.0 earthquake near Ulri, Vanuatu today, just off the coast. The people in Ulri, Vanuatu felt that quake. The people in Ulri, Vanuatu felt that quake. It was close enough to land. I did my research earlier today. It was very close to land, within 20 miles of land, a large earthquake. While they may not have felt the entire brunt of a 5.0 large earthquake, they did feel the quake. I don't believe there's going to be any kind of major damage, but they felt that quake. And it's going to continue. Ronald Ellis is here in the chat. He's saying, like it or not, these movements are going to increase because of the upcoming planet. Okay, Richard, you're talking about Planet X, Nibiru, the brown dwarf. It's you guys that hammer on Nibiru and the brown dwarf and Planet X. You don't know what you're all talking about. The brown dwarf, Nibiru, or the Planet X that everybody's talking about here has very little to do with all the earthquakes. That more has to do with the tectonic plates. The tectonic plates. Nibiru is just part of the solar system. It just was noticed here in the solar system within the past 10 years. Okay? It does not have the effect that people are talking about. It doesn't. I've studied this. I've delved deep into it. One of my friends named Terrell, he and I have talked about it. He is more looking at it like I do more and more. Okay? In the beginning, about four years ago, I had Terrell on a program. And I, yes, I'm going to get him back on the program again. But Planet X doesn't have everything to do like people are saying. It just doesn't. I've studied this. I've studied it. I know what I'm talking about. A lot of sci planetary scientists are saying that Nibiru doesn't even exist. They do not even look at it. I've looked at it. I've looked far and wide into it, guys. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Now, I don't go in for rumors. I don't go in for hearsay. I report what I see. Why? Because I want to protect some lives. 
my primary job here on YouTube has always been the protection of lives and property. I don't go off on half crocked information. I just don't. I won't. I won't go there. Now, Demon Catman is here in the chat. Demon Catman is one of my mods and one of my valued friends. He says the sun fires off flares and chrono mass ejections. And guess what? He is absolutely right. Those chrono mass ejections, or what they call CMEs, are bursts of radiation, plasma radiation sent out from the sun. And that plasma radiation travels over towards the planets like the Earth, and it goes like this. It goes like this. It goes out. It hits the planet. It hits the magnetosphere that helps protect this planet. It goes because our magnetosphere is not very strong right now because we're just, we just came out of a solar minimum, which the solar minimum had weakened our magnetosphere. As we have these chronal mass ejections and solar flares, the magnetosphere is supposed to be getting stronger. But that plasma radiation hits our magnetosphere and our atmosphere. It goes out along around the planet like this. If you go over to my buddy, Mark Wages, he has a program called Wages World here on YouTube. Before the end of the night, after this program is finished, I will put his a link to his program on our program description. Because I'm broadcasting on my phone right now, I can't put the program description up, but it will be on the program description within the next 10 minutes after I get off the air. But that plasma radiation hits, a, hits the planet just like this, hits the earth. Some of that plasma radiation goes through the magnetosphere, through our atmosphere, into the surface of the planet. It goes also down deep towards the plates and down deep into the core of the earth. It heats the, the plates and it heats up the core of the earth. When it heats up the plates, what happens? I've explained this before and I'll explain it again right now. Everybody needs to know it. When that solar radiation, that plasma radiation hits the plates or hits any of the earthquake faults, everything that's been holding those faults in place, everything that's been holding those plates in place, what happens? All that gunk and grime, all the dirt, all the rock and debris, all of the of the biological material heats up and turns it into an oily, greasy-like substance, allowing the plates and the earthquake faults to more freely move. That's when we get the larger quakes. That's where we get the larger tectonic quake plates, or the tectonic plate earthquakes, like we saw today in Indonesia, over in Japan, over in the Kamchatka Peninsula area. That's why we had those earthquakes. That's why we just had that large earthquake over in the Andaman Islands. Tectonic plate activity. That's why. Okay? That's exactly why. Normal aviation enthusiast, I did not mention any airlines. I did not mention any airlines at all. Okay. Chad Smith is saying the pole shift is coming. Just watch. Chad and anybody else that wants to talk about the pole shift, let me be honest with you. Nobody but nobody was around the last time the, the pole shifted. Nobody was around. If anybody is here that doesn't know what the pole shift means, it means 
the North Pole was shipped to the South Pole, and the South Pole was shipped to the North Pole. Allegedly, we're at a 35%, 35 to 45% shift. I do not, or degree shift, a 35 to 45 degree shift. I do not think it's that much. I just don't. I've talked to my science scientist friends, and they don't believe it either. At most, it might be 35% at all. Okay? Yes, we may have a planetary polar shift going to happen. But again, nobody's alive that experienced it thousands of years. Thousands of years ago. Nobody's alive now. No one knows what's going to happen. No one knows what's going to happen. What's going to happen, guys? Nobody knows. When that happens, the entire planet is going to move. Tectonic plates around the world are already moving, and they're going to move even more. Does anybody know exactly what's going to happen? No. Nobody knows. And Demon Catman is saying it's a magnetic pole. You're right. Dean, you're right. It's a magnetic pole. But when the magnetic pole moves, the tectonic plates are going to shift. They're already doing that. The Earth is not going to tip upside down. It's just a pole shift. It's a magnetic pole shift. But everything's going to be turned topsy-turvy. But nobody knows when. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Because if it was, we would already be seeing horrible, major earthquakes happening around the world. And that's just not happening. The largest earthquakes that we've been seeing as of late is no larger than an 8.7, and that happened four years ago. That's the largest earthquake we've seen, and it was up in Alaska four years ago, just south of the peninsula of Alaska. Yes, it created a two-foot tidal wave over there in the peninsula of Alaska. An 8.7 creates a 2.0 point or 2.0 point or 2 foot tsunami in the in the peninsula of Alaska. It could have been so much worse. If that earthquake had actually occurred on a piece of land, an island or the regular part of Alaska, it would have been devastating. It happened off the coast. That's the only good thing with that earth that happened as a result of that earthquake. It could have been so much worse. The plates are all connected. Okay? The plates are all connected. Chad Smith says the magnetosphere directly affects the planet poles. You're right. It does. But it's not the end all or the beginning of all. Okay. Yes, it does have an effect on our planetary poles, our magneto, our magnetic poles. Yes, it absolutely does. Okay, but it's not all be end and all. Okay. Now, when we're talking about solar events, if we go back to yesterday, last night. My buddy Mark Wages at Wages World here on YouTube put out a video. He showed a lot, a lot of sunspot activity. More sunspots than sunspots that are active than we've seen in a very long time. Several of the sunspots are earth-facing, directly earth-facing, meaning when they erupt, they're going to send coronal mass ejections toward the Earth. Coronal mass ejections are plasma radiation. 
out from the sun headed towards the earth. There are at least three sunspots. There are at least three sunspots that are right now earth facing. If any one or all three of those sunspots erupt, we're in deep doo doo. Depending on the strength of those solar flares, we will be in deep doo doo. Okay? Now, yes, we have had some coronal mass ejections. Sometime, probably within the next two days, the latest eruption from the sun is going to reach the earth. Number one, we're going to have radiation hitting the earth. It's already hit in some cases. It's already blacked out, meaning the high frequency radio waves were blocked out. Ham radios, police, fire, and medical radios as well, as well as aircraft radios, high frequency aircraft radios as well, blacked out in certain parts of the earth. That's what happens when we have a coronal mass ejection. Okay? It happens. It happens a lot. But we've had no major coronal mass ejection yet. We've not had a major coronal mass ejection here yet, meaning blackout of all radio communications and television communications. Yes, we've had our radio and television signals messed with. And you can see that especially if you're on cable or you're on satellite um, cable systems. You will see the solar flare mess up your television signal. The programs you're seeing from the television stations from your local area or on satellite will be messed with. They'll go in and out or they'll completely disappear. Those are that solar radiation happening that's messing with your signal. That happens with television and radio signals. It happens every day. Sometimes it's more so than not. But it's happening. Everybody needs to be aware of it. If we ever, and we have had some strong solar flares that hit the earth, and I have put out information about those, and I've told people to protect themselves, to wear hats and long sleeve shirts or sweaters or jackets, to protect yourself from solar radiation, from burns, the best thing you can do if we ever have another major solar eruption is to stay indoors, if at all possible. And I will alert you when that happens. It has not happened but maybe once or twice in the past five years that we've been on the air. But I will tell you that. I will always come on the air if there's something to talk about, meaning a major event that's going to affect people. I will always come on the air. If When I go off the air this evening, I will tell you, and I always say this, I will be back on the air tonight if anything major happens, anywhere around the world. That's always been my philosophy because we're trying to save people's lives. We're trying to save people's lives, and that's what this is all about. That's been my philosophy and always will be. It always will be. Because then, if you're not willing to talk about what I'm talking about, don't even bother putting anything in the chat. And I'm telling that to everybody. I want everybody here to pay attention to what we're talking about. Pay attention to what we're talking about, please. Okay? Pay attention to what we're talking about.
Yes, there are some YouTube programs that don't mind you talking about anything you want. Because of what we talk about here, I want you to pay attention to what we're talking about because it's important. It could even save your life. What I'm talking about can save your life or save your family's or friends' lives as well. Maggie just put up a chat here in French. I don't speak French. Nobody here, I think, speaks French. You need to speak English on this channel. You need to speak English in the chat. If you can't do that, don't bother here. Because your chat will be removed, which it was. Don't do it. Don't do it. Speak English. Brady Morris says his dad knows me. That's great. I don't know who your dad is, but that's great. Yeah, I know she said, hello, do you speak French? Yeah, I saw that. But no, I don't. Speak English here, please. That's what we do best. That's what we do best. Anyway, guys, I didn't mean to get off on that, but I want people to pay attention here. Okay? You need to pay attention. I want you to know what's going on. More than anything, I want you to know what's going on. Like I said, it could save your life. It could save your life or the life of your family members. That's why we come on the air. That's why we come on the air. Now, South America has also had its share of earthquakes today. Most of those earthquakes are moderate earthquakes, 4.0, 4.9 earthquakes. They have had 5.0, 5.5 earthquakes all over South America during this last week. Over in Central America, USBS, United States Geological Survey, we call them BS because they don't say much of anything. Today, in Central America, there's one 4.5 earthquake, one mod earthquake off the coast of Nicaragua. Folks, over in Central America, there are 18 earthquakes today. 18 earthquakes have happened in Central America. USGS shows one. There are 38 earthquakes in Southern Mexico. 38 earthquakes in Southern Mexico. USGS shows zero. None. Why not? Why not? They're not showing any earthquakes in Europe. None. Why not? All I am asking, yes, Marcia, 18 earthquakes. I've been monitoring some, them since early this morning. 18 earthquakes in Central America. Sometimes even more. Chris is asking, are these earthquakes caused by CMEs? Some of them are. Some of these earthquakes are caused by coronal mass ejections, not all. Again, there are tectonic plates moving around the globe. Earthquakes originate way down in the South Pacific. Earthquakes around the globe everywhere originate way down in the South Pacific. As we see earthquakes move around tectonic plates, we see these tectonic plate earthquakes happen all around the globe. But that originates down in the South Pacific. Marsha Fish says we are denied so much information. You're right. She says it's truth. We're denied so much truth because the agencies don't want to tell us. In the case of the United States Geological Survey, and I've mentioned this many, many, many times 
during my five years here on the air. The United States Geological Survey is run by politicians. The politicians want to stay employed. So they are telling the management of the United States Geological Survey to not tell us about everything that's going on. Because the politicians want to remain employed. If the USGS was going to tell us the truth about everything going on, people would move away from the areas where we're having these large earthquakes. They would want to stay alive and move away from where we're having these large earthquakes. That is happening, I can promise you. But USGS says, oh, we're not going to tell them about it. We're not going to say anything about it until it's too late and the earthquake has already happened. That is their method of operation. What I, we used to call in law enforcement their MO, their method of operation. Why would they say that? Because, folks, let's put it this way. If the politicians weren't saying that and we were seeing these earthquakes, for example, up along the entire western part of the U.S. and Canadian um, boundaries, the plate boundaries, the west coast of U.S. and Canada and Mexico, if USGS was showing these earthquakes, people would move away from the beaches. People would move away from the coastlines. The politicians don't want the information to get out because they would be out of a job. If people were moving away from the coastlines, what would happen? Number one, the people would lose. People would move. There would, no be, there would not be anyone paying taxes. Nobody would be paying taxes. What's wrong with that picture? What is wrong with that picture? If nobody's paying taxes, who's going to keep the lights on in the cities and the counties? Who's going to pay the electricity bills? How are we going to keep the street lights and, and the stop lights going if there's no tax money also the people that have the stores in those areas would not have the businesses they would also go out of business and they would also not be paying taxes if they left the area and shut down shop so the cities and counties would be without money if the cities and counties are without money the politicians would also be out of a job so the politicians are telling the USBS, don't tell the people everything. Don't tell them anything that they don't already know. That's why the politicians are staying in business, why they still are there, telling us what to do. They don't want to be honest. I've seen it happen. I've seen this very thing happen all around the globe. Where we've seen seismic energy hit, people leave. We just saw a 9.0, 10.0 major earthquake happen in Turkey. Turkey and Syria region. Turkey and Syria have the border area in common. A 9.0, 10.0 earthquake hit there almost two years ago. Actually, no, it hasn't been two years. It was a year and three months ago. February last year. February last year. Folks, they're still getting hit with large 5.0 activity. Aftershocks. They're getting hit with moderate earthquake activity, 4.0, 4.9. They're getting hit with small 3.0, 3.9, 2.0, 2.9, and they're getting hit with hundreds of tremors every day. Hundreds of tremors every day. They're getting hit with 60 to 70 earthquakes every day. The Turkey, Turkey Syria border region. The 
larger part of Turkey is also getting hit with 30 to 40 earthquakes every day. The tectonic plate is moving. That's why. USGS doesn't say anything about any of those earthquakes in Turkey and the Syria border region. Not a word. USGS is not saying today that there are 45 earthquakes in Greece. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. 45 earthquakes in Greece and USBS says zero, nothing. There are earthquakes hitting in Italy. 38 earthquakes in Italy alone. USGS says nothing. We have earthquakes hitting in Switzerland, Germany, France. They're not saying a word about it. We have some minor tremors and minor earthquakes hitting in Spain. Three to five earthquakes hitting over on the western side of Spain, Portugal area, and two or three earthquakes in southern Spain. South of Spain, just east of the Strait of Gibraltar, we're seeing three to ten earthquakes every day. Yeah. Three to four earthquakes in the Canary Islands. South America, getting inundated with earthquakes. Central America, Mexico, getting inundated with earthquakes. USGS says nothing. They're covering up earthquakes in California, Oregon, and Washington, and Canada. USGS does not hardly ever report earthquakes in Canada. We have to go to the Earthquake Seismic Agency to pull earthquakes out of Canada for Canada. Fortunately, it's usually just small and minor earthquakes, 3.0, 3.9, or 2.0, 2.9 in Canada. But occasionally, we get a lot more than that. We do. Today, about 150 miles west of me, we had an earthquake here in North Carolina. An earthquake here in North Carolina. About an hour and a half west of me, we had an earthquake here in North Carolina today, a minor earthquake. The new matter fault. People are asking me almost every day what's going on on the new matter fault. The new matter fault comes out of the Gulf of Mexico and it runs right smack dab up the Mississippi River all the way up into Illinois and Indiana and Ohio area. Guess what? U.S. just rarely says anything about the new matter fault. This past weekend, USBS showed some minor earthquake activity, meaning 2.0, 2.9 activity in Tennessee. Yes, two minor earthquakes in Tennessee and one in Missouri. The fact of the matter is this. Missouri was hit with multiple small earthquakes, and I'm talking about probably 18 to 20 earthquakes every day Every day, every day, all week long. When I talk about the new mattered fault on my normal program, I show you the seismograms showing these earthquakes. And USGS says nothing about it. Not a darn thing. We've been having some minor and small earthquake activity here in North Carolina. We've also had two Modern earthquakes, two modern earthquakes, one being a 4.2 and the other being a 4.7 here in North Carolina last week. USGS said zero, nothing about it. Earthquakes in Virginia, earthquakes in Virginia. Three weeks ago, we had a, what USGS termed to be a 4.5 in New Jersey. I call BS. I did the research. USGS called that a moderate 4.5 earthquake. It was actually a very large 5.9 earthquake. And we're still seeing 
minor earthquakes and tremors hitting in New Jersey still today. Two minor earthquakes today. Two of them. That's because that earthquake that hit two plus weeks ago was a 5.9 very large earthquake, not a moderate 4.5. They're full of crap. The agency lies through their teeth saying, oh, we don't think that's as bad. We're trying to protect you. No, they're not. They're protecting their back sides. The only thing they're doing is trying to protect their backsides because they're lying through their freaking teeth. They're going, USGS is going to be responsible for the death of many people. USGS is going to be responsible for the deaths of many people because they're not being honest in the earthquake reporting. Plain and simple. We've seen it happen. It's going to continue to happen. Because they can't tell the truth. The agencies cannot tell the truth. Period. It's sad. Jeff is asking what this stream is about. This is called Emergency Management Associates. Why? Because we associate ourselves with not just agencies and governments and individuals, but all of you. All of you are part of our associates network. You pass information to us. You are associates of this group that I put together for a while. That's why the stream is about earthquakes. It's about natural disasters. We talk about hurricanes. We talk about all kinds of storms. We talk about tornadoes. We talk about violent winter storms. We talk about straight line winds that come in off from the upper atmosphere, drop down to the surface and cause major damage. We talked about shootings. We talked about explosions. We talked about just about everything that could harm anyone. That's why we're here. Because nobody else will report it. And if they do report it, they don't tell everything. Or they don't report it until it's too late. That's why we're here. Monir's Rass is case in point. If you lie, all your customers eventually don't have no more commerce going on. You're right. You're right. Nobody else has any money. You're going to go away. I want to make sure that everybody that listens to this program has the information that's necessary to save their lives and save the lives of their family. That is what is most important. That is what is most important. Melissa Split is asking, do you think it has anything to do with the five flyboy asteroids between the Earth and the Moon as we speak? No. No. Asteroids don't have any impact on what's going on on this Earth. Okay? None. None. If there's asteroids coming anywhere close to this Earth where they would impact the Earth, that would be a different story. But that is not happening. Adventuring Mike is saying Africa is splitting. That depends on who you're talking to. The splitting of the continent of Africa depends on who you're talking to. Yes, I could probably tell you that there is evidence of the continent of Africa opening up. There have been large, what should I say, large cracks, large fissures that open up in Africa. But that's happening everywhere. Everywhere. We saw a 14-mile-long crack 
open up in Turkey after that 9.0, 10.0 earthquake hit there. A 14 mile long fissure that was eight stories deep. You could fit an eight story tall building in that fissure. What's happened over in Iceland? Earthquakes have happened there. It's not just volcanoes over in Iceland, folks. The central mid-Atlantic fault cuts Iceland in half. One of the biggest reasons that Iceland is getting hit with earthquakes is because the mid-Atlantic fault is expanding like this. The mid-Atlantic fault is expanding like this, even out into the middle of the ocean. The Atlantic fault is pushing Europe and Africa to the east. On the same token, the Mid-Atlantic Fault is pushing the North American continent and Mexico in a south-southwesterly direction. That's why we're seeing so many earthquakes on the East Coast, because the Mid-Atlantic Fault is pushing the North American continent in a southwesterly direction. Canada, the United States, and Mexico. What's happening in Iceland? It's splitting Iceland in half. At some point in time, we're going to see possibly two countries there. Iceland is splitting in half. The fissures that are opening up in Iceland are, are along the Mid-Atlantic Fault that cuts Iceland in half. That's what's going on. Yet, USBS is not saying a damn word about it. They're not saying anything about it. Nothing. When Eris Rath is saying, point being, USBS literally hasn't had any reports of earthquake activity in Africa for some time, despite the physical evidence. You're absolutely right. Occasionally, they will talk about earthquakes over in the Republic of the Congo. They'll talk about a volcanic eruption down in the Republic of the Congo. And actually, it's not even the USGS will talk about it. It's Volcano Discovery. They'll talk about that volcano over in the Republic of the Congo. USGS is not going to say word one about it. They don't give a damn. USGS has, in fact, said that they don't talk about earthquakes out of the United States. Really? Really? They only talk about earthquakes outside of the United States when they get around to talking about it. That's it. But they don't. They have no intention of talking about earthquakes at all. They won't do it. Now, I want to, I've said this before and I'll say it again right now. Back when the Ridgecrest earthquake happened in Southern California four years ago, 2019, July 3rd, we had two 6.9 earthquakes. USBS took one of them off completely. I have documentation that there were two 6.9s, two separate and distinct 6.9 earthquakes. Separate locations. They took one of them off the map completely, saying it didn't happen. The other earthquake they took down and downgraded to a 6.4. July 3rd, 2019. July 4th, we had a 7.1 earthquake in Ridgecrest, California. A 7.1 earthquake. And now scientists are saying it may have been as large as an 8.0 in Ridgecrest. USGS continues to hide information. Lucy Jones, who at the time was a seismologist working for USGS, was asked by a reporter the morning after the Ridgecrest earthquake happened. The reporter asked Lucy Jones, why are you not putting up all of the earthquakes on the map? Lucy Jones did not even stop to think about it. 
Lucy Jones replied, because there is not room enough to put all the earthquakes on the map. That was a lie. That was an out-and-out, bald-faced lie. USGS will never tell the truth about anything, period. They didn't tell the truth about the New Jersey earthquake. They have not told the truth about the earthquakes in New York. They have not talked about the earthquakes even in North Carolina, except for that 2.7 today, about 150 miles west of me. Yes, occasionally they will admit to a tremor or a minor earthquake, but that's all. They're not reporting any of the earthquakes that are happening along the coastline of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. They're not talking about any of the earthquakes along the Continental Divide. I live on the, in the foothills of the Continental Divide, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. Actually, that's not true. It's or 332 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina, where I am at right now. I am far enough away. I am on the Continental Divide of the United States, and the Continental Divide of the United States is what is also getting hit. But USGS will never say that. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid they'll admit it. They're not admitting to any of the earthquakes or hardly any of the earthquakes in California. I can't say any of them. They're only admitting to what they're forced to talk about. They're not talking about any earthquakes in Oregon today, yet there are. I can prove it. They're not talking about any earthquakes hardly in Washington State. They're saying the volcanoes are having tremors and microquakes. I say bullshit. Sorry. I'm telling you the truth. From Mount Baker in the north in Washington State, Mount Constitution, Glacier Peak, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, going down to Newberry Volcano, going down to Sisters Volcanoes. Yes, there's two volcanoes in the Sisters Complex. Actually, no, there's three. I'm sorry. There's three volcanoes in the Sisters Complex. We go south, and there's more volcanoes than that. We go south down to South Central Oregon to Crater Lake. Guess what? Earthquakes there. But U.S. just is not talking about a damn one of them. Not one. Why not? Because they don't want anybody to know about it. They don't want anybody to know about it. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. Robin Short says, how do I go live? Open up your own YouTube channel. And then you need to have something to talk about. A reason, a subject you want to talk about. I talk about all kinds of emergencies. I do that every day. Because there's a reason. People's lives are in the balance. People's lives are in the balance. That's why we're here. Demon Catman says money, control, and politics. Exactly. Well, here is Rass says distraction, division, and subversion. Exactly. Now you're hitting the big words, the real truth of what's happening. You're actually hitting the truth. It's going. It's going. It's going to continue to go, guys. Promise. It's going to continue to go. Somebody just said here in the chat, and I just removed them. One of my mods put them in timeout. I removed them because they said, who cares? Who cares? I care, and I believe you care as well, or you would not be here. You would not be here. Marsha Fist says, 
Fish says, thank you for your loyalty to humanity. Yes, I am. I've got my loyalty to each one of you and your families and all your friends. That's why I have many times during my broadcast asked everybody to share this program far and wide. To your friends, your neighbors, your family, your extended family, to the people you associate with on social media and also the people you work with. Share far and wide. Let people know what's going on. Everybody needs to. Now, we want to. We want to get this program out. We want to grow this program. It's not for me. This has nothing to do with me or my ego. And yes, I do have an ego occasionally. I do. I'll admit to it. But, on the same token, my reason for wanting to grow this channel is so more and more people will have access to it. I would love to see what I had a year ago. A year ago, the beginning of April. A year ago, the beginning of the month. This, this month. YouTube took my last channel down. I had 25,000 plus subscribers on my first YouTube channel. YouTube did not like me telling the truth. They took some of my programs completely down. They kept taking me off the air. The first time was 24 hours. The second time they took me off for a week. The second time they took me off for a month. The next time after that, they took me off permanently because they don't want me to tell the truth to anybody that's going here. They don't want me talking about politics whatsoever. As soon as I start talking about politics, what happens? All of a sudden, we get buffered. We get buffered all over the place, and it doesn't matter whether I'm using my phone to do the broadcast or I'm on my computer. They buffer it down to nothing. Sometimes they eliminate the, the program. A week and a half ago, you, the YouTube people took one of my programs off. I still don't know why. They've never told me why. I keep checking my emails thinking, well, they took it down for a reason. They must tell me why, but they haven't. They took it down. It's not available for anybody. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid the truth gets out. 29% of the people that watch this program are not even subscribed to the program. 71% of the people subscribe to this program and are often here every time we go on the air. 29% are not subscribed. Why not? If you're watching this program, you need to, to subscribe to this program, and you also need to do something else. There is a little bell icon right next to the subscription button. When you subscribe to this program, click on that little bell icon. There will be a drop-down menu of three items that come up. Click on the word A-L-L, -L, all. That way you should get notified when we come on the air. If you find yourself not being notified, unsubscribe and resubscribe immediately. And again, click on that little bell icon and click on the word AOL. That should get you notified every time we come on the air. But still, YouTube still unsubscribes people. They don't notify everybody when we're coming in on the air. Many of the people that are here right now know that they don't notify you when we come on the air. People come and look at my channel, look at Emergency Management Associates, and see we're on the air sometime between 6 p.m. and 7.30. I was trying to get on the air about 7.10 this evening. I'm not, sorry, not 7.10, 6.10 this evening. And as soon as I came on the air, all of a sudden, things started happening. That does not usually happen. 
It does not usually happen. It's a sad day when it does. I will be coming back on the air tomorrow between 6 and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm worried about everybody's safety. That's why I'm here. Marsha Fish is on the chat saying, I'm worried about you. She's worried about my safety. Telling the truth has a price. You're absolutely right. It does. I am doing my best to protect myself and my family. Just so you know, in case you haven't heard me talking about it, I'm an ex-cop. I'm worried about my safety all the time. No matter where I go, I have something hidden on my person to protect myself and those I care about and also to protect those that are around me. Because if someone gets held up, someone tries to hurt somebody, guess what? Again, my oath to protect and serve does not have an end to it. If I am able, I am going to help protect them as well. Just as so I try to help protect you in giving you the information you need to have. That's been my philosophy. I'm going to continue doing it. Period. And yes, I carry something on my person to protect myself, myself. Let me tell you something else. Sometimes my wife sees me wandering around the house with my W-E-A-P-O-N. She says, why are you wandering around with that on your side? She knows. About a week or two ago, I actually got out of the house without my piece on my side. We got going down the road and she goes, why are you not armed? And I'm going, oh, son of a buck. Because she knows I have something someplace. She knows it. She's seen it. I'm here to protect everybody. I'm here in my house to protect me, my dogs, and my wife. If my kids ever come out to visit or I go out to visit them, guess what? I will always have something to help protect them as well and protect anybody else around me. That's who I am. That's who I always will be. That's, a, that's a, my life. Kathy Payan says, Ron, the Mount St. Helens eruption. Mount St. Helens has not erupted since 2003. The first Mount St. Helens eruption happened, um, I believe it was September 1980. It was a big deal. It's a big deal. It's going to happen again. Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier are getting ready to erupt. I've covered that. I keep telling everyone every week, and I keep showing you seismograms. I keep talking about what U.S. is so shows us nothing but minor microquakes. There are regular minor earthquakes and small earthquakes happening at Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. At least once a week, there are moderate earthquakes at both of those volcanoes. 4.0, earthquakes at Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier, and I can prove it. I can show you, and I have shown everybody, seismograms, which are the graph that the seismograph gives us. The graph. I've shown all of you the earthquakes that are happening. USGS says nothing about it. The agency, USGS and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, run by the state of Washington in Washington and the University of Washington in Washington, sometimes lie about the seismographs. They falsify the data. I have seen earthquakes that have happened around the world, major earthquakes that happen around the world. 7.0s, 6.0s, 6.5s, not showing up on the seismograms. 
They show up on some of them, but not all of them. Why? Because the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and the USGS get it in their beaks that they're not going to tell anybody about it. They only show those earthquakes when it's convenient to them. So they're lying about it. They lie about all the earthquakes hitting those areas because heaven forbid they tell the truth. Heaven forbid. Why do you think they are talking only about what good Biden has done? Promising the illegal immigrants 15000 a month in credit cards that they don't have to declare, that they don't have to pay taxes on. And now they're not getting them. They're not getting them, and they're protesting to the city of New York, like I talked about earlier. Biden has lied. He's gotten all those illegal immigrants across our southern border and bring them into the United States and leaving them hanging. Now they're being kicked out of the hotels and everything else all around the United States because those hotels are not getting paid by the Biden administration. The illegal aliens are not getting paid either, like the Biden administration said. Why do you think we're getting these protests by these Palestinians in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and other places? Why? Because they want us to just accept everything the Palestinians want in Gaza. Not going to happen. Why? Hamas attacked Israel. Israel retaliated, and the Palestinian people said, oh my gosh, what happened? If the Palestinian people wanted peace in Palestine, they should go to Hamas and combobulate Hamas. Take them out. Remove Hamas from power. Remove those terrorists from power, and guess what? There would be peace. The same thing goes for Iran. And guess what? Israel is saying they're going to attack Iran, and I believe they will. Biden told them not to. Biden says, oh, let's look at this diplomatically. We can solve it diplomatically. Bullshit. It's wrong. My buddy Brokefish is talking about Ryan Volcano erupted. Large sections of the island over in Indonesia has been wiped out by the major eruption. And that's not the only one. That's not the only eruption in Indonesia. This past few days, there's been a huge eruption of another volcano over in Indonesia, Halmahera, Indonesia. They have now got a um, area two miles around the volcano where they don't want anybody getting there. They have basically evacuated that entire area because that volcano is throwing boulders, red hot lava boulders out of the summit of the volcano. And those boulders are rolling down the side of the volcano along with hot, red hot lava coming down the side of the volcano. Two mile area that's been evacuated. And that's not the only two earthquake or er, two volcanoes that are erupting. I can name off probably 30 volcanoes all around the world that are erupting. Fact. And there's another 15 or 20 volcanoes that are getting ready to go. They just haven't thrown anything out of the top of them yet. Or out of the side of them. Because volcanoes do come out the side. Just like Mount St. Helens did in 1980. It's happening. Catherine's World Wildlife Tracking says, Hi, Demo Hi, Demon Cat. Nice name. Yes. Demon Cat Man is, is a very good friend of mine. I talked to him quite a bit, actually. I wish we talked more. <laughs> right, Dean? Yeah. Anyway, do you guys have any more questions or anything for me? 
I'll be happy to take any questions that you have. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Human Catman says, yes, thanks, Ron. Dean is a very good friend of mine, guys. Every one of my mods here are very close friends of mine. I'd invite them to my home for dinner. I'd do anything to be with them, and I have. I have. Marsha Fish is asking, what can we do to stop the madness? Stand up for something. Stand for something. Quite frequently, people have asked me why the things are happening. Because we're not standing for something. We're not standing up for our rights. Aubrey's asking, will we we'll be talking about Cascadia tomorrow? We will be talking about Cascadia if there's something to report. I didn't report on Cascadia yesterday, but I will. Typically on Mondays and Thursdays, we talk about Cascadia. I haven't had much time to talk about um, the New Madrid Fault either. Tomorrow, I want to address Southern California. You folks that live in Southern California, Oregon, and Washington have a reason to be worried. Earthquakes are happening, and no one is telling you about it. Nobody is telling you about it. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about earthquakes in Southern California, as well as things that are happening around the world. Okay. Now, I forgot to talk about what I'm going to say right now, but I'm going to say it right now. There is another gentleman here on YouTube. Five years ago, I came here to YouTube for a reason. Because this other gentleman said he was leaving YouTube and not coming back. So I talked to my wife. I talked to many of my friends. And they encouraged me to start my own YouTube channel and talk about earthquakes, which I did. This gentleman has lied to his followers. He continues to lie to his followers in the rest of the world. Recently, earlier this month, this man lied to the people of North Carolina. He said that North Carolina was going to experience a major earthquake. He called it a 6.0, 6.5 earthquake. That's not a major earthquake. That is a very strong earthquake. Now, it's been 10 days since he said that. He's wrong. There has been no very strong earthquake. There's been no large earthquakes. And heaven forbid, there's been no major earthquakes here in North Carolina. He is lying through his teeth. He is fear-mongering. I don't like fear mongers, and I call them on it every day. If you're going to fear monger, you don't belong on the internet. You scare people. I don't like scaring people. I'm going to tell the truth to your face and everybody else's. I always do and always have. I always have and I always will. I don't fear monger, but this other gentleman has lied to his public. He has absolutely lied to the public. There's something that's got to be said about that. Something's got to be said about it. It's got to stop. He's going to continue to put out this crap all the time because nobody's stopping him. You and I can stop him. You and I don't have to watch him. We don't have to listen to him. The only reason I know about him doing this is because I know people that watch him and report to me. And they take screenshots of the information. He lies to the public. Fear porn does nothing but hurt people. Stop it. Don't watch this man. He's not worth it. 
stop watching him. Now, I have heard recordings of him on the air. So, and I've said this before. I have a feeling he is higher than a kite. He's either high on marijuana or he's strung out on methamphetamine. That's my opinion. I'm a cop. I'm a retired cop. I dealt with drugs and alcohol out on the street when I was in uniform. I have heard people speak like he speaks. I have heard him lie. I don't like liars. He needs to stop it. The only way he'll stop it is if all of you stop watching him and giving him a reason to be on the air. Let me tell you about this person. I'm not going to mention his name. I won't mention his name. When I first started watching him some, what, eight, ten years ago, he was right on the money. He told it like it was. He didn't tell lies. Now he does. Back in the day, he had 25, 30,000 people that were watching him. Then all of a sudden, he was buying people. Yeah, you can do it. I could do it, but I won't. If I have people that watch my program and say they watch this program and I get the information that they do, I get the information that you watch my program. He started buying viewers. He started buying ratings. He started buying thumbs ups. He started buying subscribers to his program. Now he has over 600,000 subscribers. Most of them he paid for. Most of those people he pays for. When he goes on the air now, he goes on the air and just lets his computer run. He doesn't even have to say anything. He just has a globe called three, Earthquake 3D running, and all it does is run around like this. And every time there's an earthquake, it dong, dong, dong. If it's a 3.0, it dongs, dings three times. If it's a 4.0, you're going to hear dong, 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 dong. With every magnitude, it goes up. He has that running. But he's not talking. He sometimes has 300 viewers that he's not even paying attention with. He's sleeping. He just lets it run. What kind of crap is that? I don't do that. I will never do that. If I show you an earthquake, it's happening or it has happened. If I tell you something that's going on, a protest, someone getting injured, or in the case of the protesters happening, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to show you pictures. Folks, Dana Walker says, how do you know he's sleeping? Because his program will be running with that earthquake 3D and he's nowhere to be seen all night long. Five and six hours at a time all night long. Diane Kilman says he sounds like a loser. In my book, he is. Yes, he used to talk the truth. Now he doesn't. Poulin Hart says it kind of sounds bitter. I'm not bitter. I just don't want people to get hurt. And some of my friends have been hurt by him. And that I don't, I despise. I dislike it. I'm not bitter. I dislike it. I don't like liars. When I was a cop, I didn't like to be lied to to my face. And they did it all the time. People lied to my face all the time. I didn't like it. I didn't put up with it. Folks, all I'm telling you, watch yourselves. If you see somebody like that, tune it out. Don't let them get your vote. Don't tune into their program because they're not saying anything. They're not giving you anything but a revolving globe, watching it go round and round. What good is that? 
Sergio Castaneda is asking me, can you predict, predict earthquakes? I do not predict earthquakes. I can and have forecasted earthquakes. For example, a few years ago, there was a 7.0 earthquake in Mexico. I said the next day, within the next day or so, there's going to be a 7.0 earthquake. As a result of that 7.0 earthquake, there's going to be another 7.0 earthquake in Southern California, and there was. I called it on the money. Yes, occasionally I will forecast earthquakes when I see seismic energy moving. I have done that, and I will continue doing it. When I see seismic energy moving in a direction, I do that, and I've done it all the time, and I'm spot on. Okay? Marsha Fist says you're not bitter. The tube guy is a bitter fear monger. He's right. She's right. Marsha, you're absolutely right. He's a fear monger. He lies to the public every day. I don't like liars. I don't like people being lied to and taken advantage of. And it's sad because the more subscribers you get, the more YouTube pays you. The more subscribers you have, YouTube pays you. I mostly get paid by you and I, you people who are my friends and neighbors and my loved ones here on this channel. You guys send me donations through Super Chat and occasionally you send them to me in the mail. Let me tell you about one such person that sent me a check in the mail today. I got it today. He sent the check to me and I want to show you this. He sent the check to me February 27th this year. February 27th this year. Guess what? My, my last post office box was a place in Valdez, North Carolina. Valdez, North Carolina. Guess what? The Valdez post office got it on April 11th. April 11th. They forwarded it to my new address here. It took four days from, for the post office in Valdez, North Carolina, to forward it here to my Morganton office here. I now get my post office mail from the Morganton office. Okay. Brother Bashir's. T. Bashir's. I'm not going to give you his first name. He lives in Springfield, Missouri. He sent me a check on February 27th. It took two months to go from Missouri to North Carolina for me to get it. Canadian Patriot One says, I'd mail myself to you, but I can't afford the stamp. Yeah, literally. Our friend here that watches our program put a stamp on this. He sent me a little letter. He wrapped his check in the middle of that letter. He says, we love you, Ron. No words to be, need to be spoken and signed it. He wrapped his check in the middle of the letter so nobody could see it from the outside. I appreciate that. And yes, Canadian Patriot One, oh, how I would love to see you. I really would. I really would. Canadian Patriot lives in um, Canada, out in the middle of the Tulis of Eastern Canada. He's a good friend of mine, as most of you are. I love you guys. Canadian Pager says, we need to go fishing, Ron. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Folks, I love you. I care about you. 
just so you know, my mailing address is 104 North Green Street, Box 105. 104 North Green Street, Box 105 in Morganton, North Carolina. M-O-R-G-A-N-T-O-N, North Carolina. The zip code here is 28655. I would love to get more mail. I would love for you guys to send me donations to there, and people do, just like I just showed you. I love it. You guys also send me super chats, which I greatly appreciate. That means the world to me. YouTube takes 48% of your money that you give me. YouTube takes 48% of the money. They say they only take 40, but they take 48% of the money and give me the rest. Isn't that interesting? You guys can give me super chats even tonight. They will pay me on the 21st. YouTube's cutoff for you to give me money is actually the 18th of every month. So you could give me super chats up and through two days from now. After that, they cut it off and it goes into the next month. I appreciate that very much. Like I said, many of you send me cards and letters. I really appreciate it. And in the middle of that card or letter, you stick some money. I greatly appreciate that. Virginia says, sent you a card March 6th. <laughs> it still hasn't gotten here yet, but I appreciate that. I appreciate it very much. You guys, I care about you. I truly love each and every one of you. That's why I do this program. I care. Now, I want to share something else with you because I do that at the end of every program. I share a devotional, something more spiritual. Because we talk a lot about negative things, including earthquakes and storms and politics and stuff. I like to leave you with something more positive to something that would lift you up because I care. I want to take my devotional now from the Gospel of Luke in the New Testament. I want to go to Luke chapter 4. I'm going to start with verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this is a day. This day is a scripture fulfilled in your ears. How many times did Christ meet the doctors and the Sadducees in the temple? How many times? The first time we know about was when he was 14 years of age. When his parents couldn't find him, they ended up checking the synagogue where Christ was preaching to the ministers and Sadducees in the temple. His parents asked him, why didn't you stay with us? He told his parents, Joseph and Mary, his earthly parents. He told them that he was about his father's work. Christ was about his father's work. I have remembered every story throughout the scriptures about our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. 
the Son of God. I have loved and appreciated every story. I have appreciated every sermon that he preached. I appreciated every story where he helped someone. Remember the woman said that she had sinned? She had prostituted herself? What did the Lord Jesus Christ say to her? Everybody around her wanted to stone her, as was a custom for some man or woman that stepped out on their spouse. Or they disobeyed the law. In this case, the Savior said, you're forgiven. Go forth and don't repeat your sin again. That is the kind of man Jesus Christ was and is. He wants to forgive us. He's made it possible that each one of us can repent and return to our Father in heaven. As I've said before, our Father in heaven and his Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, want us to return to them. They want us to return to our Father in heaven and live in their kingdom in heaven. Before we came to this earth, we lived with them in heaven. We promised them that if we were allowed to come to this earth, to gain a body and have experiences that we would find Jesus Christ again and obey his commandments and thus return to our Heavenly Father again. Jesus Christ came to this earth and made it possible that he took upon himself the sins of the world. Jesus Christ took upon himself the sins of the world. It started in the Garden of Gethsemane. It last Golgotha, and he died, taking upon himself the sins of the world. Well, here's Wrath is asking what verses. Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 18 through, I think, verse 24. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was resurrected and made it possible that each one of us will also be resurrected and not be subject to physical death. Yes, each one of us has to die. But Jesus Christ has made it possible that each one of us can be resurrected and live again and return to our Heavenly Father's kingdom with our families each one of you with me and our families in heaven again. That's what I want. That's what I want for each of us, brothers and sisters. That's what I want for everybody, each one of us. Find God. Find our Heavenly Father in your life. Find Jesus Christ in your life. Make them a part of your everyday experience. Pray. Pray yourself. Find out for a fact if what I'm saying is true. And if it is, follow it. Do the things necessary to follow the scriptures and return to Heavenly Father in his kingdom together with Jesus Christ. Please do that. Please do that. You will be blessed beyond comprehension, I promise you. There will be many blessings put upon yourselves and your families by your obedience to the commandments of God. You will bless your families, I promise you. If you're here in North Carolina, if you're ever here where I live, come to church with me and worship with me. I would love to sit next to you. I would love to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you, just as I'm doing now, and just as I do every Sunday on our Come Follow Me program. 
because I care. May God bless you. May God be with you this day and always. God be with you until we meet again. Like I said earlier, if anything else happens tonight, we'll be back on the air to tell you about it as soon as the information becomes available. We will be back on the air between 6 and 7 o'clock tomorrow night with Emergency Management Associates telling you what's going on to give you the information you need. Like I said, may God bless you and be with you. God be with you until we meet again. We will see you on the other side. Thank you so much for all you do for me. We will see you on the other side. God bless. Good night, everybody. Much love.